What are the key components of a business plan? Or restated, what is a solid outline for a business plan? To begin with, you're going to start with an executive summary. This is a general summary of the entire plan. So if someone only had the ability to read a very small portion, one, two, maybe three, but generally one or two paragraphs, to learn as much as they could about the business overall, then this is the executive summary, and this is how you're going to start the business plan. I will say that oftentimes you create the executive summary at the end, after you've created the entire plan and have included everything that you wish in the plan. <clears throat> after that, you'll begin with a general summary of the business's value proposition. What does it do? What value does it deliver to customer, clients, or end users? Why is that a value proposition to someone? What is the need or want that's being answered there? Next, you'll move on to the company's mission, vision, value statements, and its goal statements. Basically, you're trying to outline what the company stands for, where it sees itself going in the future, what are the guiding underlying principles, the motivations that it's going for, and maybe even provide some more specific goals or objectives that the company hopes to achieve or accomplish along its path. So if the vision is growth and market dominance and all of these things, what are some objectives there? Is it enter with 10 different product lines in the market? Is it consolidate and have a single product line that expounds and improves over time? That type of thing. Okay, market analysis. What's the size of the market? What's the general customer priority for your different market segments that you are able to identify? Which of those segments are you primarily targeting and which are secondary and tertiary market segments? Use as much detail as possible to define who is your customer, why are they your customer, what are their characteristics that make them want or relate to the value proposition that you're offering, and you will even put in information about how you plan to reach them, how you plan to make them aware of your product or service, how you plan to consummate or carry out the sales process to them in that way. All of this goes into the marketing analysis and ultimately your marketing plan. Competitive analysis. The competitive analysis identifies and examines others in the market that are offering a similar or the same value proposition to customers or clients that are could also potentially be your customers or clients. So who are your competitors? What are the substitute products? What are the direct competitive products? Also look at things like uh, suppliers, buyers, or the distribution channel. If these are key players as part of the value delivery process, is there competition not only for what you're delivering and for the customers out there, but for the resources that you need to supply that good or service to the populace? And how do you get it to the uh, to the customers or clients? Is there some uh, bottleneck in the distribution channel or key distributors that you need to go through and things like this? This is where you're going to examine the competitive forces. Porter's Five Forces is a very important competitive model to include in this portion. Okay, The marketing plan. I spoke earlier about the market analysis, what you're trying to identify about your customers, their size, their priorities, things like that. You will translate that into the marketing plan, which is all of the marketing mix, the uh, product, the price, the placement, the promotion. If you expand those into other things like people, physical evidence, packaging, all the P's that you've heard of that come into the marketing mix. This is where you're going to lay these out in as much detail as possible to help whoever's reading the business plan really understand what means or method you're going to use to meet the needs or wants of your customers. Okay, Operational plan. What are the procedural steps that must happen or take place in order to deliver value and to receive back value from your customers or clients. 
This can be very granular in nature and should be broken down by the various categories of functions that need to be carried out, and it should identify those who will be charged with carrying out those functions, when, where, how, why, etc. Okay? Management and organizational structure. How will your overall entity be organized? How will you divide out? all of those operational tasks and functions that need to be carried out as part of the business operations process. Who will be accountable for these various functions and the ultimate output of the people that they're managing to carry out these functions? So again, this will lay out things such as what are the tiers of reporting all the way up to the top? Who are the owners of the company? Who is uh, on the board of directors? Uh, who initially are shareholders, which is very important in startup ventures, which generally the shareholders, executives, employees are all the same people until you start bringing in outside investors. But originally, who is the management structure and how is all of that organized? And then lastly, financial projections. Your financial projections generally Project what your startup cost will be, what your fixed and variable costs will be based upon operations over a period of time. Generally, you break down the projections month by month for the first year, quarter by quarter for the second year, and then just generally the third year. The reason, because the further out you go, the more speculative it becomes in nature, so you can't be as exact. So once you've laid out all of these cost drivers, you will then be able to project revenue. That is, what sales do you uh, attribute to a certain amount of effort? So in identifying the effort and the costs that go into it, you will correlate that with some level of new customer acquisition, new sales, uh, new users, that type of thing whatever your business model is, and you attribute that to an amount of revenue commensurate with the level of operational activity and thus the cost that you are occurring throughout. So you'll do the same thing. You identify all the revenue that you expect over a given period of time. As part of those financial projections, you'll show at what point you believe you will reach break even and what you see as being the profitability curve after that. And then you'll state where you believe you will get your financing. Where's the money going to come from to cover all of the startup costs and all of the shortfalls in revenue to cover all of the costs initially until you reach that break-even point, until you reach profitability. If you want to do a bit of further analysis, uh, particularly if you're trying to entice investors with a particular r rate of return or potential rate of return in the future, you'll do a net present value or internal rate of return calculation uh, there as well based upon your projections and what when you believe the company will either become profitable or what its growth metrics will look like and based upon the revenue or users generated, what that translates into in terms of value in the market if the company were to be sold. Uh, so all of this is generally part of your financial projections portion. And then really lastly, if you have anything to append, such as marketing material, additional research that you've gathered on the business, the market, things like that, um, intellectual property transfers, things of that nature, patent filings, uh, any of these things that would be relevant to the planning process uh, can be appended to the end of the business plan. Not every business plan will need to append things. Much of the information will be contained internally. But in summary, these are all the portions that should be included in a thoroughly laid out and developed business plan.